All right, so today we're going to be looking a little bit at something in statistics called the range. Um, you probably already know and been using the range for a long time. It's the difference between the greatest data value, maximum, and the least data value. The minimum, you just take the smallest one, you subtract it from the biggest value. Um, you've probably been doing that for a long time. The interquartile range, which might be a newer thing, is the difference between the value of the third quartile and the first quartile. Similar to the normal range, you just subtract to figure that out. Subtract the first quartile from the third quartile. If you don't remember what quartiles are, they are similar to the median. That's like the middle value, it's, but it's like the quarter values. So the first qu a quarter in is the first quartile, two-fourths in would be the median or the second quartile, and the third three-fourths in would be the third quartile. So let's look at how we can calculate that range, an interquartile range, and then really why that inter quartile range might be important, and we can also call that the IQR. Um, so we've got right here a class. We've got the number of pull-ups for the students in Mr. Bob's class. Um, we will see right here we've got a list of, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got 13 students and how many pull-ups each of them got. So if we were going to figure out the range, pretty straightforward. Biggest number is 12. Smallest number is 3. That means we have a range of nine. So the, over the course of nine numbers is where we're going to find all of the data from the students. Now the interquartile range, um, what we're going to do, and we'll kind of show that too, how it's useful. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the, we have to find those quartiles. So again, we want to start by finding the median. We have 13 values, so we'll find the middle value. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven would be the middle value because there are six values on either side of that. So that's our median. And then to find the quartiles, again, we're just going to see basically from these numbers and then from these numbers, what are the middle? So again, if you have an odd number, you're going to find it in that you're not going to include the median in that. And so we can see right here, the median would be in between the four and the five. So that's 4.5 halfway in between, and then the median on this side is going to be between 9 and 10, so or sorry, 9 and 11, and so that's going to be 10 right there. So that's our first quartile, that is our third quartile. Um, so the quartile, interquartile range would be just subtracting those, so we would have 10 minus 4.5 equals 5.5. So we have a range of 9, an interquartile range of 5.5. And we might be wondering, okay, so what is the point of even having that? Um, so we'll do a quick drawing right here. And we're going to use box and whiskers plots to kind of look at this. So if I had 3, my interquartile range was 4.5, my median was 6, 10, and 12. And then we're going to connect these together and We'll talk about this in a second. I'm going to make another one with another set of data, and then we'll kind of see why that interquartile range is actually helpful. So let's say we have another class, Mr. Frank's class. We've got our data right here. You can see there's one more value. So we have uh, 14 kids, um, and we're going to figure out the range and the interquartile range, and then we're going to look at how that interquartile range is actually helpful. So same thing, we're going to find the middle. Now in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want to do those middle sixes right there, um, two median values. And so then to find the quartiles, when you have an even amount, again, you pick the first, you will include those numbers uh, if it's even. And so then that middle number right here, one, two, three, the fourth number right there is going to be five. Five is our first quartile, so it's in the half the middle of that first half, and then one, two, three, four, right here. Oops, let's do that and write again. Um, right here, the seven, that's our third quartile. And so if we were to grab, so we're going to do our range right here, we do 25 minus 3 equals. 22. So we have a huge range right now because we have this last kid right here who's like superhuman who's doing 25 pull-ups blowing everyone else away. The interquartile range is going to be 7 minus 5 equals 2. And I'm going to do the graph real quick. Um, 
we have our three is our minimum, five is our inner first one, six is our median, seven is our third, and then 25 all the way over here connects those together. Okay. Okay. So here's where the inner quartile range is actually helpful. If we look at these values, right, if you were only given the range, and let's say when we're usually given that, we're saying like, pretend like you didn't have this data right here. You're just given these numbers. If you're just given these numbers, and you think about them in the range, you, you look at the second class, and you're like, wow, that class has a huge range. Um, there's a lot of different answers. But if we actually look at it, right, I'm gonna take, get rid of those black lines. If we actually look at it, we can see that the data is actually much closer together. And that inner quartile range is very different between them. For the second group, it's two. And for the first group, it's 5.5. And that really tells the spread. Um, so the spread of the data is how sort of spread out it is. If we look right here in the second one, we can see that middle 50%. So again, remember each of these little sections is going to be 25%. So from here to here is 25%. From here to here, from here to here, I'm not gonna be able to write the percent symbols in there. And then from here all the way over here is another 25% of the data. So all of these chunks are each equal to 25% of the data. Same thing up here, 25%, 25, 25, and 25. So it's like half of the numbers, the middle half of the numbers, the middle 50%, is much closer together and clustered together in the second group. And so a small interquartile range is telling you the middle numbers are much closer together, whereas this one, the middle numbers are a little bit more spread out. So that interquartile range, smaller quartile range, numbers are close together in the middle, large interquartile range, the numbers are gonna be more spread out. Let's look at one more example for how we would actually use these. Um, so let's say we had three classes and we have the test scores of those three classes. How can we sort of think about the range and the interquartile range? We'll notice right now, all of our medians are right down the line. All of our medians are exactly the same. 14, 14, 14. We'll come back to class D in a second. The range, we have 20 minus eight equals 12. For the second class, we have 18 minus six equals 12 as well. And then we have another 20 minus eight equals 12. So if you were only given the range, you would, and the median, you'd be like, oh, all classes did the same. But if we look at the actual data, we can see it's much more spread out. Like we, the, the spread of the data looks different. The classes actually did differently. So if we use that inner quartile range, we can kind of explain what the, how it's different. Um, so we have 16 minus 12 equals four. We have for the second class, we have 17 minus eight equals nine. And the third class we have 17 minus 11 equals six. So that inner quartile range, again, we're seeing the smaller inner quartile range. It means that middle 50% of the class scored between a 12 and a 16, it's like close together. Most of them are kind of close together. If we look at the second class, we with the larger interquartile range, we know the spread of that data is gonna be much wider. If we had a fourth class, we'll say we don't actually have a graph of it, but um, we'll make that look a little neater. We have 14 as their median and we had a range of 16. If you heard the median score on the test was 14, but there was a range of 16, so spread out across 16 numbers, um, you might be kind of worried because like, oh my gosh, it's all over the place. The class score was not consistent at all. But if you had, let's say, an inner quartile range of two, then you'd be like, okay, well, if I, I can't draw it for sure, but it's going to be like really close together. That middle 50% is really close together. And then we know that there's going to be some big outliers. Um, and it could be like that. It could be a little bit like shorter on this side and longer on this side. We're not sure exactly because we don't know that just from this information right here. But what we do know is that small interquartile range means 
the, the data is really close together in that middle 50%. Okay? So that's kind of your main takeaway for interquartile range and how you'll use it.